Hello friends, in previous classes we studied about the Fermi level, we also studied about the Fermi level direct distribution function. But now in today's class we will be studying about how there is a shift in the Fermi level if there is a change in the impurity and concentration of the material. <music> In today's class, we will be talking about effect of impurity concentration and temperature on the firm level. We will be taking one by one at time. So now, let's talk about effect of temperature on intrinsic semiconductor. Well, by intrinsic, it means that it's a pure semiconductor without any doping. Now, so for that, let's take the band diagram. So, here's the band energy. This is the valence band and the conduction band. And now, this is the intrinsic semiconductor's Fermi level at 0 Kelvin. We had already covered this in the previous class. It is always at the midpoint of valence band and the conduction band. This is the condition that we assume for the intrinsic semiconductor at 0 Kelvin. The condition is MH is equals to Me. Well, it means the effective mass of the hole should be equal to the effective mass of the electron. Now, this effective mass of hole and effective mass of electron is something which is beyond your syllabus. So, just make a note. This is the assumption that we make at 0 Kelvin. As you can see, as I increase the temperature, my Fermi level shift towards the conduction band. And this is the condition when my MH is greater than Me. It means the effective mass of the hole when greater than effective mass of the electron then the Fermi level shift towards the conduction band. Well, the reverse is true as well. This graph will move downwards if effective mass of the hole is less than the effective mass of electron. So, we can conclude that Fermi level shift towards the conduction band if effective mass of holes is greater than the effective mass of electron which is shown in the first case and it shifts downwards towards the valence band if the holes has effective mass less than that of the electrons. So this is how your temperature affects the intrinsic semiconductor. But what happens in the majority of the cases? Well, in majority of the cases, we always assume the effective mass of the hole to be equal to the effective mass of the electron. And thus, in general terms, we always say that the Fermi level of an intrinsic semiconductor does not get affected by temperature. This is the reason as you can say 95% of the chances we are just talking about this level. Now let's extend our study to extrinsic semiconductor. As you know extrinsic semiconductors are of two types n-type and p-type. We make n-type by adding a pentavalent impurity and p-type by adding a trivalent impurity. So now let's talk about the effect of temperature on an extrinsic semiconductor which is doped with N type impurity. Now again recalling the same diagram. This is the band energy versus temperature graph. These are the valence band and the conduction band and this is the Fermi level if it had been an intrinsic semiconductor. Well before we begin with this it's very important to note that these questions are very important for your exams. In exams there would be a sure shot question on effect of concentration or temperature on extrinsic semiconductor. Well intrinsic being very easy it's not asked that often and hence extrinsic semiconductors becomes an important part of your syllabus. Moving ahead now this level is the level of donor or called as donor level. Now as the temperature increases the Fermi level graph shows this pattern. Now we will mark the labels. This is the temperature Td and this is the temperature Ei. Td and Ti. We will mark this as Ec, the energy of the conduction band, the lowest. This is EF, the Fermi level. ED is the energy of the donor level. EFI, this EFI is very important. This is the Fermi level if this semiconductor had been intrinsic. So basically, how does this graph vary? As you can see, till we meet the temperature TD, the graph goes almost straight. And after that, it shows a deep fall. 
and the point where ED and the Fermi level graph meets is the temperature TD. Beyond this, the graph shows almost linear relationship till the point TI has come. This TI point is the temperature wherein the semiconductor shows intrinsic behavior. As you can see, at temperature below TI, the graph was almost up EFI level, which means that the Fermi level was above the intrinsic Fermi level. But when the TI temperature is crossed, the graph is showing Fermi level equal to EFI. So what does this conclude? This concludes that at lower temperature, your extrinsic semiconductor has a higher Fermi level, but after point TI or after point of temperature TI is obtained, the semiconductor shows characteristics of intrinsic semiconductor. So let's conclude this in few points, which would help you to write the answers. The first point of course is, At T is equal to 0k, Fermi level lies at the midway between EC and ED. EC is the conduction energy and ED is the donor level. Now, as the temperature increases, donor level gets depleted and Fermi level comes down gradually till the temperature TD. As you can see, as the temperature is increased till TD, there is a depletion in the donor level and hence the Fermi level drops down. Beyond TD, the temperature decreases in a linear fashion till TI. As you can see, if I decrease the temperature in a linear fashion, of course the Fermi level is also going to decrease in the linear fashion as well. So this could be a point of question in your Viva exams. Between TD and TI, Fermi level and temperature shows direct relationship or a linear relationship. Make a note of that. At TI, intrinsic behavior sets in. So, once the temperature TI is passed, your extrinsic semiconductor is now as good as to be called as intrinsic semiconductor. So, at higher temperature, the n-type semiconductor loses its extrinsic characteristics and behave as an intrinsic semiconductor. This is the most important point that you need to know. So, overall in a nutshell, how to remember this answer? This answer is very simple and very important for your exams. You just need to remember the shape of this graph and then you just need to describe this graph in these bullet points. You can extend these bullet points and make a 3 to 4 mark question. Now, that's all for n-type semiconductor. Let's see how does the behavior change for a p-type semiconductor. Well, it is very easy. Just the graph will shift on the valence band side and the ED level here, it will be now called as EA level or the acceptor impurity level. So, here the graph would look like. So, let's talk about the effect of temperature on extrinsic semiconductor or the p-type semiconductor. Again, recalling the same graph of band energy versus temperature and having conduction band and valence band. This is the intrinsic semiconductor's level. If this semiconductor had not been extrinsic but had been intrinsic, this is the acceptor level and this is how the graph is going to appear like. Let's do the labeling. This temperature is Ea or the acceptor's temperature, it is replaced by Td in the previous case and this temperature is as good as Ti again. We can label them as Ec, Ef, the Fermi level, Ea, the acceptor level and Efi as Fermi level if it had been an intrinsic semiconductor and of course Ev, which is the valence band. Now, as you can see, as the temperature is increasing, your Fermi level increases. After point Ta is passed, your relationship goes direct, linear, till temperature Ti is obtained. Beyond the Ti, you can see that the extrinsic semiconductor. So, we can say that beyond point Ti, your extrinsic semiconductor behaves as good as your intrinsic semiconductor. So, again, concluding this in bullet points, here we have at T is equal to 0 Kelvin, Fermi level lies at the midway between EC and EA. Remember this point from the previous slide, it was EC and ED, but now here it is EA. So it's very easy to remember this answer, just replace donor with acceptor and D with A. As the temperature increases, acceptor level gets filled. Now, in previous slide, we talked about the depletion of the donor level because the donor level then 
minimizes or you can say the donor level depletes but here the acceptor level gets filled and Fermi level goes up gradually till the temperature Ta. Beyond Ta temperature increases in the linear fashion till Ti and of course as the temperature increases in a linear fashion of course the Fermi level is going to increase in linear fashion as well. At Ti intrinsic behavior sets in. So at Ti, your semiconductor is just about to behave as an intrinsic semiconductor and beyond which, of course, it will act like an intrinsic semiconductor only. So here we can say that at higher temperatures, P-type semiconductor loses its extrinsic characteristics and behaves like an intrinsic semiconductor. Well, this is what the effect of temperature is on extrinsic semiconductors and intrinsic semiconductor just to recall for intrinsic semiconductor it depends on what is the effective mass of the hole and what is the effective mass of the electron and depending on which it goes towards the conduction band side or the valence band side in p type semiconductor it goes towards the acceptor level and in n type semiconductor it goes towards the donor level so this concludes the effect of temperature on intrinsic and extrinsic semiconductor. Now let's talk about the concentration or the impurities concentration. Now let's talk about the impurity concentrations effect on the Fermi level. Now it is clear that it is applicable only to extrinsic semiconductor because in intrinsic semiconductors there is no point in impurities. So now let's begin. Effect of impurity concentration on extrinsic semiconductor we have taken N type semiconductor which means it's an intrinsic semiconductor doped with a pentavalent impurity. Now we can have three different types of impurities low doping, medium doping and heavy doping. Now this is the donor level as you can see it is n type semiconductor and for n type semiconductor we always have a donor and hence the impurity is called as the donor impurity and the energy level is called as donor level. Now always remember this is a point to know that in n type semiconductors you always will be dealing with ED which is the energy of the donor level and in p type semiconductor you always would be dealing with EA which is energy of the acceptor level. Let's label the energy levels. This is EC the conduction bands energy. This is EF the Fermi level. This is ED the donor level. This is EV the valence band level. Now what happens if I increase the doping? Now, what is increasing the doping? Think logically. Initially, you had added 10 atoms of impurity into it. So these 10 atoms would be spaced substantially in the conductor. So there would be no interaction energy between them. If I increase the doping, let's say suppose and now there are about 50 atoms. Of course, the interspacing between these will decrease and the interconnection between the impurity atoms will also play a role into this. So this is what happens when the impurity is increased or the concentration of the impurity is increased. The donor level widens. The donor level widens to this and this is what it appears like. Of course, as the donor level widens, as you can see, initially, let's say, suppose it was just about 0.05 EV. Now it is about 0.7 to 0.8 EV. Now, if there is an increase in the donor level or the donor zone increases, of course, there's going to be a shift in the Fermi level as well. Of course, the Fermi level is going to go upwards and this is the new Fermi level. As you can see, the Fermi level on increasing the concentration has moved towards the conduction band side. What if I increase the doping further to reach heavy doping state? When if I do that, of course, the same trend is going to follow and this is how it is going to appear like. As you can see, now the donor zone has overlapped the conduction band and of course, the Fermi level is going to shift here as well. So this is the most important thing to know that as you increase the doping, the ED or the donor's energy widens and the Fermi level shifts towards the conduction band. Well, this is the most important question which had been asked in your university exams and hence it's very important to know how it has been drawn. You need to draw this diagram and also explain this. Now, 
let's talk about what will happen in the p type semiconductor but well before beginning with the p type semiconductor you can just imagine what could be happening as i told for n type and p type migration you just need to replace ed with ea and donor with acceptor and hence the graph is also going to shift on the lower side so let's begin We'll be talking about effect of impurity concentration on the extrinsic semiconductor and now we have taken p type now again as we have taken p type we are now talking about the acceptor impurity so this is the energy band graph for low doping medium doping and heavy doping here we have acceptor energy here this is the fermi level let's label the energy bands it's ec the conduction energy ea the energy of the acceptor level ef fermi level and ev valence band and of course the valence band ev now the same thing is going to happen if you increase the doping concentration the ea level or the acceptor energy level widens and this is the new level of course widening of the acceptor level is going to move the fermi level towards the valence band side and this is what the new fermi level would look like what if the doping is increased further well if the doping concentration is increased further the ea level is going to wider further and ef is going to shift towards the valence band and maybe it can also overlap which it actually does so this is how it appears like widening of the ea band and shifting of the fermi level this is how the effect of impurity is on extrinsic semiconductor for both n-type and p-type. Thank you.